All right, folks, 97 Ford F-350, 7.3 Power Stroke, OBS. Uh, I am a rookie or novice uh, builder. I did a uh, disc brake conversion from the old drums. As you can see one on there, there's a backing plate. There's the other one there. There's the uh, one of the old hubs. I'll get to that in a second. Um, I got the kit from uh, CP Attic. Uh, we'll go ahead and get a, pick up the portioning valve. I'm about a say about halfway through the project. I do a little bit at, at a time. Uh, but let's get to it. Uh, you're gonna need a couple of specialty tools uh, before you get started. Uh, The uh, we'll spin on that uh, remover. So when you take this apart, you're gonna have to remove both hubs. There's other videos on how to remove the hubs. I went ahead and did the races, bearings, and seals on both sides. Uh, passenger side had a really bad leak on the on the seal, so I went ahead and replaced all the hardware there. Um, so yeah, you're gonna find other videos on how to remove that and, and replace those items. Uh, got the axles out, replaced those uh, axle seals as well. Um, while I was doing that, I uh, placed the one on the driver's side. You can see this is really worn here. So I had to go with the replacement one. So when you get your stuff out before you reinstall everything, check all your parts, make sure you got everything. So I got a, a used hub on the driver's side. Uh, so yeah, once you get the hubs off, you're gonna remove that backing plate which is this piece right here. Um, before you remove that backing plate, I'm gonna go ahead and remove, uh, advise you to go ahead and bleed out all your old uh, brake fluid. You can see mine's really crusty. I'd rather bleed it out through this old uh, drum system than through your new calipers. So I bled all that out while we're doing it. Uh, after you get that, uh, with the kit from CP Attic, you're gonna have uh, this mounting plate here. I'll post some pictures as well, as well as that additional spacer. Um, you can see it right, oh, see, right there. That's the additional spacer right there. Also, you have to go get some new hardware, um, one and a half inch bolts to bolt in place because the other ones weren't long enough. So. That is uh, something that you're gonna have to take into consideration as well. I also went ahead and got the upgraded braided lines. Um, and as you can see, I'm gonna have to cut that line. I went and bought a flaring tool kit along with some extra hardware and also got some new line. Uh, this is a you know, shit, 20 year old truck. Hey, if you're already this far into it, like I said, uh, you might as well go ahead and knock it out while you're here. So with that being said, I got that bolted up as you can see with this top bracket, the caliper mounted high to the rear. Got your bleeder back here. Uh, still have to get this spring off of the original uh, emergency brake and I'm gonna run it up underneath through that hole right there. That's on the caliper and up to this clip right here. Um, I may have to cut it, I may not, I'm not sure yet. Um, you will have a little plate here in the caliper on both sides. It's designed to do that. I gave him a call over at CP Attic just to make sure. Um, so yeah, that's that. Um, things to be note of. Make sure you know how to put your hub back on um, and that spindle nut. Uh, it took me a couple tries, a couple videos, a couple conversations with some folks. Uh, once you get that thing t tightened down to 60 foot pounds, you're going to have to back it off between five and eight clicks if you're using new seals or old seals or whatnot. Um, make sure you torque it down to the proper torque specifications. I'm no mechanic. I can't tell you what that is. Also, torque these down properly and go ahead and change out all the seals too. There's no sense in getting it all buttoned up and then having to go back and replace something that could replace when you had it open. So, uh, not really a difficult job. 
Uh, it takes time when somebody like me don't know what you're doing, don't have necessarily all the right tools. Uh, here on the driver's side, this is where the bad hub was. Um, as you can see, I just got it all installed, mocked up. Um, and same thing over here. I got that spacer bracket and I got new hardware. So with the previous hardware, you had four of these bolts holding in that, that backing plate. With the new hardware, you're only going to need three. Um, and once again, you're going to have this plate here in the caliper. Um, and once again, I'm going to have to cut this spring from the emergency brake and try and run it up through to here and see if it's a proper length. As you can see with the uh, upgraded steel brake, Braided hose line on the driver's side. This actually almost mounts directly to that T. So I'm gonna have to figure out what to do there. But like, like I said, I got some new, I got new line all the way around uh, from Amazon. It wasn't very expensive. It's coming with the fittings and stuff. I also bought the flare tool kit. Um, you are gonna have to pop off your rear diff. Uh, make sure you drain that in order to get these axles out. Um, none of this was super difficult. Uh, like I said, you're gonna need that one specialty tool for the uh, to get that axle out um and then outside of that uh nothing crazy um but yeah once i get the uh, proportioning valve i will uh make a video after it's all completed i'm not going to go through step by step on how to do it because there's other videos on how to get the majority of stuff done uh people more knowledgeable i'm just showing you my setup when i was trying to put this together there was not a video out uh, no reference or anything like that. So here's what it is. If you have an uh, old body style Ford F350, 250, and you want to buy one of these disc brake kits for the Sterling axle, um, like I said, I got mine from CP Attic. There's other uh, places out there that are selling them. Um, they did say you may or may not need that spacer that's back here. Uh, when I did all my different sets of mock, mock up, I had it all kind of different funky ways. I had this in the front. Uh, then I called CP Attic. They said they'd rather mount it to the rear. When I had it mounted to the rear the first time, I had the caliper down too low. It was below the axle. I didn't like the way it was sitting. I raised it up above the axle, and I liked the way that's sitting. However, the calipers didn't fit anymore with the pad, so I added the spacer. Then I had to go get new nuts, so uh, just keep all that in mind. If you're going to do all that to think this kit, uh, around seven, 800 bucks if you get everything updated um, or upgraded steel or the hose and also the... Uh, portioning valve you're looking about 800 bucks depending on where you get it from um, then count on a few more dollars for your flaring tool kit some uh, brake hose or brake line and fittings and so forth um, and while I was at it I went ahead and got a um, a new rear diff cover uh, I'll go ahead and show another video after I get it all kind of buttoned up I got it, uh, the Ford replacement with the fins on it but that's where I'm at. That's what it looks like. Uh, it's my only YouTube video. Like I said, I'll post another one. For those who have the Sterling 10.5 uh, and old body style Ford F350 and you're sick of those drums, uh, this is it. Probably cost you about a thousand bucks or so, um, give or take, depending on if you need to buy a new hub like I did. Um, and if you're a novice like myself, I was just doing it in increments. But if you wanted to sit down and do it, you could probably do this in about a day or two uh, with the help of with the help of somebody else. So that's all the time I have for you today. Uh, hopefully this is helpful in your endeavors for you old body, uh, old body self for guys. Um, yeah. All right. Thanks.